Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guests are from the InfiniBand Trade Association. We have Mike Jockinson from Emulex and Bill Lee from Mellanox. Gentlemen, welcome to the show today. Rich, thanks a lot. Uh, this is Bill Lee. I'm the co-chair of the uh, Marketing Working Group, and with Mike, also a member of the Marketing Working Group, we're going to uh, talk about um, the latest uh, specification released from the IBTA. Well, well great, Bill. I, I brought your slides up. Why don't we start with that, and we'll follow it with a Q and A. All right, very good. So, starting with uh, slide three, uh, just a brief overview of the uh, IBTA. Uh, we are a, uh, a member organization dedicated to uh, maintaining and furthering the InfiniBand specification. Uh, what this means is uh, we have architects uh, defining the, the specification from the wire all the way up into um, the application and API um, layers. Uh, we also uh, monitor um, compliance, uh, ensuring of compliance and interoperability, and uh, we promote the uh, the InfiniBand and Rocky uh, capabilities, which is what we're doing today. Uh, slide four, a brief introduction into RDMA. Uh, those letters stand for Remote Direct Memory Access. Uh, this is a movement of data between servers and server to storage without the involvement of a CPU. Uh, this is uh, different than uh, what people normally know about Ethernet and TCP IP. Uh, there's a lot of CPU involvement in that kind of uh, communication. RDMA offloads all of that into the adapter card, uh, providing a more efficient uh, way of moving data with a lot less overhead. Uh, slide five uh, gives you a diagram of um, traditional ways of moving data. Uh, as you can see, each step from application down to the NIC is a process. Uh, Data is moved, CPU is involved. Uh, there's a lot of delay between when the application kicks off the request and it actually gets onto the wire and then back up to the application on the other side. The next slide shows a uh, simplified version of RDMA. Uh, very simple interface between the application and the adapter card. Um, this is why we call it bypass. It's bypassing a lot of the uh, processes gets the data on the wire very quickly, and then gets the data off the wire equally as quickly, um, reducing the wait time of the uh, target application for the data. Slide seven gives you uh, why this is important. Uh, really, the IBTA believes that for the most efficient data center, uh, IO is uh, important. Uh, it's central for the uh, for data centers achieving the highest performance and the highest efficiencies. Uh, by offloading uh, a lot of the uh, the requirements for um, I/O movement and uh, speeding up the, uh, the communication, we enable um, servers to be more efficient, applications to be more efficient, uh, and in the end, data centers to be more efficient and businesses to uh, uh, generate higher levels of uh, revenue. Um, utilizing RDMA, first of all, gives you lower latencies and uh, CPU offloads, uh, but again, it, uh, it's all about um, higher utilization, more efficiency, and uh, better productivity within the data center. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Mike to talk about uh, the Rocky specifications. Great. Thanks, Bill. So, Rich, on, on slide eight, it talks a little bit more about Rocky. And Rocky is another acronym standing for RDMA over converged Ethernet. And it is an example of bringing that proven InfiniBand semantics onto the more pervasive Ethernet backbone. <clears throat> we know Ethernet has been extremely pervasive throughout, especially the enterprise and the enterprise is very comfortable with Ethernet in terms of uh, back-end for all of their applications, uh, becoming more popular for their storage. They're comfortable with the, the management utilities on Ethernet, the adapter switches and cabling in Ethernet. And more recently, the enterprise has been implementing converged Ethernet to take advantage of lossless capabilities on Ethernet. This was introduced a number of years ago 
and has become more pervasive throughout the industry uh, and is also known as data center bridging. The decision to bring Rocky or RDMA over converged Ethernet to that backbone was a very natural decision. The, as you saw in earlier slides, bypassing a number of those kernel operations can dramatically increase the performance and efficiency of Rocky, and it allows you to obtain the, the best performance capable on an Ethernet platform. So that enables faster applications, more efficient processing. This is being driven by a number of ecosystems out there from traditional enterprises as well as the, the products that support them, the databases, the cloud ecosystems, the ISVs, and storage OEMs. Slide nine talks about the efficiency a little more. I mentioned that, that TCP just wasn't designed for RDMA. And by implementing it over Rocky, it uh, enables uh, bypassing a number of the TCP IP steps that would cause inefficiency in the communication path. So Rocky does give you that ability to support the lowest latency and the highest performance. And it does it with adapters that are comparable in power consumption to other NICs on the market. Slide 10 then goes into more detail on what the IBTA is announcing. Rocky V2 allows you to take advantage of layer three routing with Rocky. So Rocky V1 was uh, worked within a single layer two network and was, was very proficient at communicating between servers and servers and storage devices within that layer two network. Rocky V2 extends that capability across layer three routers so that as data centers expand, they can take advantage of the same communication efficiencies across the data center. It's done through the use of UDP headers that allow layer three routers to identify what to do with the packets as they're sent. It is transparent to applications and the underlying network infrastructure because it's done using the standard OSI model and only touches the layer three OSI and does it in a way that uses the standard OSI conventions. So this will enable those standard mechanisms to forward and manage traffic that is destined between la layer two networks, that is rocky traffic. Transitioning to slide 11, this is a side-by-side -side comparison of the stacks. So on the far left, we have the InfiniBand stack, which runs across an InfiniBand network layer and uses the InfiniBand link layer. In the middle was Rocky V1, which takes the same InfiniBand transport protocol and network layer and puts it on top of the Ethernet link layer and puts it on top of converged Ethernet further. Again, this was uh, designed to run in a, a single layer two network. So with Rocky V2, it takes that InfiniBand transport protocol and replaces that IB network layer with the standard UDP and IDP layers that allow layer three routers to route the Rocky communication across the Ethernet link layer. Slide 12 just as a deeper dive on the frame layout so that you can see the InfiniBand GRH is replaced with the IP header and UDP header, which allows the, the router to identify the destination for the uh, the frame. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to Bill, who's going to go in a little more into the RDMA use in the data center. Thanks, Mike. So um, what we're doing, what the IBT is, IBTA is doing here is uh, responding to the evolving uses of RDMA. Um, 
in the beginning when uh, the first Rocky spec was uh, developed, uh, applications that could use RDMA spanned layer two um, environments, uh, either within a rack or across a data center, um, as can be sh seen in uh, slide 13. Uh, in slide 14, what we're showing here is now um, applications are uh, spanning across layer three domains and uh, um, requiring uh, RDMA to, to do likewise. And so with, um, with the Rocky V2 spec, uh, we are um, adapting the, uh, the requirements there to uh, be able to um, go through uh, layer three switches and routers. Um, as Mike noted earlier, uh, this is all transparent to the um, underlying hardware. Uh, and so uh, what that means is that the, um, the switching infrastructure and the cabling infrastructure remains the same. Uh, as what uh, is being used in today's data center. Uh, it also is um, uh, independent of the upper layer protocols, uh, the APIs, and the applications. And so the uh, RDMA applications uh, that uh, um, are, exist today can use Rocky V2 as well. Um, with that, I want to talk about uh, some of the more recent um, uh, developments within uh, Rocky uh, in, in their use cases. At a recent uh, ONS conference, um, the uh, Microsoft architect for Azure, uh, Albert Greenberg, uh, talked about uh, the, um, the implementation of, the da of that data center uh, and partway through his uh, talk, talked about the need for RDMA and the benefit that it provides Azure. Um, there he talks about uh, zero CPU utilization at 40 gigabits per second, um, very high uh, message rate as well. Uh, slide 16 uh, shows um, a recent uh, development with um, Dell Fluid Cache SAN uh, utilizing uh, Rocky to uh, create an efficient uh, cache uh, capability for data centers uh, using um, uh, the use of Rocky uh, it provides uh, high message rates um, uh, and uh, allows a very, for very efficient uh, data transfers. Slide 17 it shows the announcement from Zardera. Uh, they are also a, uh, a storage vendor for um, storage as a service capabilities for enterprises and uh, cloud. Uh, their systems use um, a technology called ICER over RDMA, or sorry, um, iSCSI over RDMA, ICER, um, and they're using Rocky, again, for very efficient uh, data movement uh, from their systems. And then finally, uh, Applied Micro, uh, another member um, with the IBTA, uh, announcing uh, ARM technologies that uh, have Rocky capabilities built in. Uh, so they see a market for uh, having embedded systems with um, Rocky capabilities uh, for their customers. And with that, I'll bring it back to you, Rich. Well, great, great, Bill. You know, I, I wanted to ask you about kind of the origins and the, the you know, the, the goals of Rocky in, in terms of the, the space, right? So, so, you know, coming from Mellanox, you guys are well known for HPC. Uh, Emulex is well known in the data center. Uh, does Rocky have equal play in technical computing and in the enterprise? We think so. I mean, Rocky is is useful for anybody who wants RDMA in uh, in an Ethernet environment. Uh, you know, the, the IBTA's position is that uh, InfiniBand is the most efficient um, uh, I/O service. Um, but for those uh, companies and data centers who need end-to-end -end, uh, Ethernet, um, Rocky is the best RDMA technology for that. Um, and so any application that uh, needs RDMA in uh, in Ethernet environment uh, should consider Rocky. And then w with version 2, um, is, it, is it mainly about performance or will it make it more accessible do you think, um, for those purposes? Uh, I think it's accessibility. Uh, and it now 
uh, enables um, RDMA aware applications to be utilized in uh, data centers that um, use layer three for isolation. Um, uh, it expands the uh, available space for uh, RDMA and Ethernet. And then, in terms of uh, uh, you know, I remember there was a there was a programming RDMA programming contest, I think. Uh, a year or two ago in China, it, it, is it tough to find people with these skills out there, and 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 is is that getting better? I believe that the level of expertise is expanding. Um, there are programs for um, educating people on uh, RDMA, uh, both at a data center level um, in order to manage networks that use utilize RDMA, as well as um, uh, educating programmers to uh, create applications that utilize yeah. RDMA. Uh, we are seeing a, a, a higher demand, um, and we believe that that will work um, arm in arm with a uh, higher level of, uh, of expertise out in the field. Great, great. And, and then Mike, I, I, I gotta ask you as well, you know, uh, for, for Emulex, uh, you know, what is their interest in, in investing in this technology, and uh, what, what kind of traction do you see out there? Emulex, as I mentioned early on, we see uh, uptake in the enterprise around converged Ethernet, and the enterprise interested in converging more and more protocols to that single yeah. wire. And so our interest in this is a natural extension of that, and also the trend in the enterprise towards uh, more scale-out type environments and applications that are starting to disperse across the data center and requiring communication across yeah, the data center. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you both uh, for coming on the show today. Thank you. Great. Thank you. you. Bet. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.